Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Physios Healing Dutch. So in this video, I will tell you how to perform postural assessment. But before that, you should know what is ideal posture and what is faulty posture. So if a person has an ideal posture or correct posture, it will produce minimum stress on the joints. So that means we can say any posture that increases stress on the joints is faulty posture. For example, if I am sitting in a slouched position for a long period of time, then my back will start aching because there, because slouch position will increase the stress on my joints. So that's why if I will sustain this position for a long period of time, my back will start aching. So this is not at all an ideal posture. But my muscles are strong enough and flexible, that's why I immediately corrected my position to minimize the stress on the joints. But if the muscles are weak or tight or joints are stiff, then that person cannot able to correct its posture and that's why it leads to pathologies like lordosis, kyphosis and scoliosis. So in postural assessment, we identify such pathologies and we treat them later with the help of stretching exercises if muscles are tight or with strengthening exercises if muscles are weak. So we can assess posture in standing position with front, lateral and posterior views. And we can also assess posture in sitting position with front and lateral view and sometimes we also assess in lying positions as well. In this video, I will only cover how to check postural assessment in standing position. So first I will tell you about the anterior view. In this, the midline divides the body into two equal halves. The head should be straight on the shoulders in the midline and you can check this by looking at the tip of the nose. It should be always in the line with the manubrium, sternum, zipphy sternum and umbilicus. Note if there is any kind of lateral flexion of neck or rotation because it can be a sign of tightness in sternocleidomastoid which is present in torticollis. Now the shoulders should be at equal level but one thing that you need to remember is it is normal to have the dominant hand to be slightly lower than the other. Note if there is any depression in the contour of the deltoid as it can be a sign of subluxation of the glenohumeral joint. Note if there is any abnormal elevation of the shoulder joint or abnormal depression of the shoulder joint. From anterior view, you can also check if patient has rounded shoulders. If patient will have rounded shoulder, then the humerus will be internally rotated. And that's why you can see more posterior or dorsal aspect of the hand. Now look again. During normal posture, my palms are facing to my body. But when a person will have rounded shoulder, then I can see more dorsal surface of the hand. The chest should be in midline. Note if there is any kind of lateral flexion or rotation of the chest. Now at elbow level, you have to note the carrying angle. The normal carrying angle in males is 5 degree and in female it is 10 to 15 degrees. Note if there is any cubitus valgus in which this angle increases or cubitus varus in which this angle decreases. Note hand and wrist if there is any appearance of deformity which is present in rheumatoid arthritis. For abdomen, observe the umbilicus. It should be in the midline along with the sternum. Now for pelvis, you have to palpate the ASIS and they both should be at the same level. Note if there is any lateral flexion or if there is any rotation of the pelvis. The knees should be straight. Observe if there is any genu valgum or if there is any genu varum at the knee. The patella should face forward. If patella is laterally rotated, it might be there is lateral rotation of femur or tibia. And if patella is medially rotated, it might be there is medial rotation of femur or medial rotation of tibia. Both medial malleolus will be at same level and both lateral malleolus will be at same level. Note if there is any 
planus in which the medial arch will touch the floor and note if there is pascavus in which the medial arch will be more than the normal note other deformities of foot like hammer foot now i will tell you about the lateral view in lateral view first observe the head position the ear lobe should be in line with the tip of the shoulder that is acromion process in faulty posture note if there is any forward head posture in forward head posture the ear lobes will be not in the line with the shoulder as you can see in this picture now check the shoulders in normal posture the shoulder will be in line with the ears but in faulty postures check if there is any protraction of the shoulders that will cause internal rotation of the arm if there is excessive retraction of shoulders then that is also a faulty posture but it is less common than protracted shoulders lateral view provides great opportunity to check the curves of the spine check the thoracic curve which is normal kyphotic curve in faulty posture this curve can be increased seen in exaggerated kyphotic postures or this curve can be decreased in flat backs in normal healthy person the abdomen should be flat note if there is any protrusion in the abdomen lateral view provides a good opportunity to check the lumbar lordosis in normal person the spine at lumbar level will have lordosis but in faulty posture this lumbar lordosis can be increased or decreased seen in flat backs now check knees in normal posture the knees are either straight or 0 to 5 degree flexed check if there is janu recurvatum in which there is hyper extension of the knees or if there fixed flexion deformity now i will tell you how to perform postural assessment in posterior view in posterior view first is head position so it should be in the midline with the body and you can ensure this by checking the ear lobe level so the ear lobe should be at the same level and if there is any deviation in the head position then the ear lobes will be not at same level and if there is any faulty rotation of the neck you can see one side of the fa client's face more than the other the shoulders should be at the same level note if there is any abnormal elevation of one side of the shoulder or abnormal depression it is normal to have a slightly depressed shoulder of dominant hand next thing to check is scapula level so the inferior angle of the scapula should be at same level and you can ensure this by check by palpating the inferior angle and if it is hard to palpate then ask the patient to grab their both hands and then it becomes prominent and you can easily palpate the inferior angle of scapula now check thorax whether it is straight or if there is any lateral deviation present because it can be a sign of scoliosis and you can check it by palpating the spinous process and check the arms whether it is equidistant from the body and note if there is any rotation present in the limbs in normal posture both the psis should be at same level you can palpate the dimples to ensure that the psis are at the same level but in case in faulty posture if it is not at the same level then it can indicate that person has limb length discrepancy knees should be at same level in correct posture note if there is any janu velgum or janu varum present at the knees both achilles tendon should be straight in correct posture but if you see any angle it, it can be a sign of pes planus in correct posture the both the medial malleolus are superior and both the lateral malleolus are inferior but if there is any variation in the position of the malleolus then it can be a sign of pes valgus and pes varus